Hare Krishna. So today on the sacred occasion of the appearance day of Srimati Radharani, we will try to appreciate the glory of her love for Krishna by comparing Radha with another sacred character in the past tense of the Lord, that is Sita. We will specifically compare the two separations that both these consorts of the Lord experience from their Lord and how this reveals that the essence of love is sacrifice. So the, the Bhakti tradition reveals a conception of God who is fully complete. Om Puranam. Complete means that God relishes all the rich gamut of relationships that we in this world aspire to relish. That's why God doesn't just reside in divine majesty presiding over everyone. Yes, that is his position, but that is not his, his heart's aspiration. He longs for love and thus he arranges through yoga maya for variety of relationships to be there. The word yoga maya is technically called, in, is technically an example of an oxymoron. Oxymoron is two opposite words brought together. Say for example, somebody gives an answer and if someone else says, that was a brilliantly stupid answer. <laughs> now, <laughs> either it's brilliant or it's stupid. How do you mean it's brilliantly stupid? Hmm? So two opposite ideas brought together is oxymoron. So yoga maya, the concept itself is an oxymoron. Why? Because yoga is that which brings connection with God and maya is that illusion which brings disconnection from God. So yoga maya seems like an oxymoron. It is an illusion but yoga maya means the illusion that deepens connection with God. So in the past times of the Lord, yoga maya acts so that a certain illusion is created by which God doesn't act always as if he is God. Because if he is God, he is supreme, he doesn't need anyone, then you cannot have any deep relationships unless every aspect of a relationship is, feel, is fulfilled. And one very important aspect in any relationship is the need to feel needed. We want to be valued by the other person, so no, the other person cares for us. But the relationship goes much deeper when we feel that the other person needs me. So, God in his rich relationships does not deny his devotees anything. So, if the devotee wants to love him as a parent, the Lord arranges that through Yoga Maya. So, Yoga Maya basically we could say is like a, the director of a divine play, a divine drama. Here drama conveys not unreality but the supreme reality. And in this drama, although God is complete and he doesn't need anyone, he has an eternal consort. And that's why God manifests all the relationships. He has a parent, he has a consort, he has friends, he has every gamut of relationship. And these different manifestations of God, if you consider Krishna and Ram, now, Ram reveals God's sweetness, but Ram is relatively uh, upright, moral, easy to appreciate manifestation of divinity. With respect to Krishna, he becomes complex. In Hindi, he said, Bhagwan Krishna tedhe hai, aur unke, unke karya bhi tedhe hote hai. So, he is twisted in his form, threefold bending. And often the way he acts is also very difficult to understand. So, as a part of the Yoga Maya's arrangement, so, so we could say Krishna Leela is like a drama 
in which yoga maya is the director and krishna and the devotees play various roles they are the drama artists and the a drama becomes more and more relishable when the drama artists enter into that role then they experience those emotions and then they express those emotions and the audience also experiences those emotions so yoga maya by her potency she makes the devotees forget that krishna is god and she makes even the devotees forget the lord forget that he is god now how can krishna forget he can't forget so there are the actors there are, is the director but the director directs according to a script and that script is written by a script writer so for krishna leela krishna is the main actor yoga maya is the director and and the script writer is krishna himself so yoga maya directs krishna according to krishna script so in that sense krishna forgets that he is god by his own will so in that sense god never loses control so the point of this analysis is to set the background for our core discussion so everything that is required for love is manifested in the past times of the lord and often love increases when there is opposition now say parents naturally love their child but if the child gets some sickness and it's a very serious sickness then the parents think much more of the child they fear will we be able to express the love will the child be there or not so any kind of opposition increases the intensification of the love and one opposition can simply be physical distance so in both ram leela and in krishna leela there is separation arranged so that there can be intensification of love now in krish in ram leela there are two times the separation happens the first time is when sita is abducted and the second time is when sita is sent away and both can be very difficult to understand at one level the first is just a demon coming in and taking the lord taking sita away that causes separation and in that separation we see sita's faithfulness and ram's determination and then they both come back and the second separation can be even more difficult to understand what's going on why did ram send sita away on just some unsubstantiated accusation i have a whole class on this topic and in my book wisdom from ramayana i have analyzed it elaborately but suffice it to say that ram personally never even doubted sita's sita's purity and that's why when he would perform sacrifices he had a image sacred image of sita next to her next to himself but it is for the sake of separation that brings intensification of love so basically the idea is that for the sake of god what all can a person sacrifice for all of us we have a choice the world is here and god is here and often the world pulls us in one direction and god pulls us in another direction and often we have to reject many things in the world and the world rejects us if we want to be devoted to god and so that can be a big challenge but one of the toughest things the sound system is rejecting me now <laughs> okay so one of the toughest things to give up is is reputation reputation doesn't mean in a in a sense of ego egoistic fame but just you know, somebody is respected as a moral respectable upright person and to give that up so when sita goes away from ram based on an accusation sita demonstrates the supreme sacrifice that although she the lord sends her away he stays she stays faithful to him and he also stays faithful to her he stays faithful in the sense that he doesn't marry anyone else so the point is that separation 
brings out the intensity of love if at least in the first separation there is a hope of union that ram will find me and rescue me in the second separation there is not even any clear hope of union but still they remain both of them remain faithful to each other and that is extraordinary love so separation is what tests love separation is to love what wind is to fire the forest fire breaks out say in california somewhere the worst thing that can happen for the firefighters is there is a big stormy wind over there it spreads everywhere so separation is to love what wind is to fire so when there is separation the love grows further and further similarly with respect to the love between the lord and his consort the union is there there is one to great love but in separation there is greater love of course separation will increase love when first the love is strong just like if it's not a forest fire if it's a candle fire and then a wind comes over there then it will just extinguish, extinguish completely so we shouldn't think oh if i get separated from devotees then my devotion will increase no our devotion will get extinguished <laughs> so the point is that we have these two separations which sita went through and through it all the love shines forth more now in the case of radharani the separation is even more special in the sense that sita is in the is married to krishna is ram whereas radha is at least in the leela she is not married to ram krishna so this is fundamentally in terms of tattva radha and krishna are eternal partners they are god in the male and female form so in tattva so it's like going back to the drama setting it's like a couple who are duly happily married to each other but in a drama they are playing a role in which they are not married to each other and they are having a relationship so then what happens see the whole point of love is that the intensity of love is demonstrated when there is opposition to the love and the setting in vrindavan is arranged in such a way that the intensity of radharani's love for krishna is demonstrated through the extent of opposition that she faces for meeting krishna for being with krishna now of course there is a second long separation for sita radharani when krishna leaves vrindavan and goes away but even when krishna is in vrindavan there is a separation because they do not they are not together as a married couple and for them to meet is very difficult and the point over here is it's not immoral it is transmoral there's immoral there's moral and there's transmoral here there is not a spark of impurity in their relationship it's pure transcendental love because krishna is fully pure but the point is the opposition in the setting is arranged to demonstrate the intensity of the love and for the gopis how much is somebody ready to sacrifice that is demonstrated by them it is one thing to sacrifice bad things to go to god we all have some sinful habits which we need to give up to come to god but it is even greater to give up the good things to go to god so in the gopis when krishna plays the flute and calls the gopis give up everything and go to krishna and that is the supreme sacrifice the gopis are demonstrating sarva dharman parityajya what krishna says give up everything ma me kam sharanam raja kam to me sarva dharman means krishna is not saying sarva papan parityajya not give up all wrong doing this is give up even the right doings to come to me so the gopis demonstrate that and that is a testimony to their love so when radharani what is her love for krishna that she cannot think of anything other than krishna and during that that time of the ras leela when krishna plays his flute and calls the gopis along with all the gopis radharani go radharani also leads the gopis in going to krishna and when they get there at that time 
Krishna talks with them and Krishna apparently rejects them. So you, what did you come here for? Did you come here to see the beautiful night, sky? You've seen the moon, the sky, the forest. Now please go back. And now the gopis get restless. And they say, Krishna, how can you send us back? So a Vaishnava poet has said that your speech is as absurd as asking a river that has come from the mountain to the ocean the ocean tells the river go back now the river has no power to go back he says we cannot go back we have given up everything in our life because you are our life how can you reject us so here again what is Krishna doing Krishna is testing the gopis the whole process of spiritual life is that God will offer us or the world you could say which is also acting under God's supervision the world will offer us every excuse to substitute God with something else it can be the sensual pleasures of the world it can even be the good things of the world so it is only when we refuse all the substitutes to God that we can get God so when Krishna is telling oh you came here you saw this, now you can go back. So what is Krishna doing? Krishna is giving them an alternative to full surrender. And the gopis show their devotion by rejecting that surrender. And then they give up everything for Krishna and the Ras Leela is about to start. They are about to dance together. And then at that time, Krishna puts them to another test. It's like they will they will longing to be with Krishna. For them, it is like it's been a long dark night, a dark tunnel for the soul. And finally, when they see Krishna in the forest, it's like light at the end of the tunnel. But life can be so peculiar that we see the light at the end of the tunnel and then we discover the light is coming from a rushing train. <laughs> the light instead of giving us hope, we have to jump out of the way. So for the gopis, they leave everything for Krishna and Krishna leaves them and goes away. And they just, Radharani especially, can't believe it. How can Krishna leave me like this? And he says, actually the idea of Krishna leaving us is, impos is absurd. Because our minds, our hearts, our very being is with Krishna. But if Krishna has gone away, then who is that fool who has fashioned another mind, another heart, another body that is still here, separate from Krishna. And then gradually as they come out of the days, they realize, actually Krishna is not here. And they start searching frantically, in despair. They go as deep into the forest of Vrindavan as is possible. And then it is a dark night and the forest is dense. And they go so deep into the forest that they can't even see their hands in front of them. And then they decide, we can't find Krishna here. We can't find Krishna here. But what is described in the 10th canto in the Ras Leela, that is described in a, in a, that is prefigured in the Bhagavatam in the first canto. When Narad Muni is meditating on the Lord, the, he has a darshan of the Lord and then suddenly the Lord disappears. And Narmuni tries desperately to see the Lord. He again tries to sit, close his eyes and meditate. He opens his eyes and looks around. He just can't see anywhere. He looks within. He tries to look as deep as possible within. But many people say look within. Now, for most of us, if we look within, now all that we see is all our wild desires and our wild mind. It's dark. We don't see Krishna there. So, the gopis are at the highest level. Narad Muni is playing the, role of a, playing the role of a sadhaka. But there is substantial similarity. See, when we try to see God, even with the full fervor of our heart, sometimes we experience a stone wall of utter darkness. What do we do? So, both what Narad Muni does, what the gopis do. The gopis realize we can't find 
and anywhere. So Radha Rani leads the gopis and they come to the banks of the Jamuna. And at the banks of the Jamuna they sit and then they compose spontaneously what is the sweetest prayer in the whole Srimad Bhagavatam. That is the Gopi Gita. So Gopi Gita, each Gopi is offering one one prayer. It's an individual prayer of her heart, but it's a collect, also a collective prayer as a representative of the whole group. And the Jiva Goswami in his Gopal Champu analyzes based on the characteristics of each of the Gopis, which is whose prayer, which prayer is offered by which Gopi. And finally, when Radharani offers her prayer, then Krishna can no longer resist. Her prayer is so intense that just as Krishna's flute song was such that that flute song through the flute Krishna's love came out and that love acted like a rope and that rope went and fell like a lasso on the hearts of the gopis and dragged them out of their homes into the forest. Similarly, Radharani's prayer coming from the depths of her heart acts like a rope and it pulls Krishna back and then Krishna returns and then the beautiful pastime of the Rasa Leela unfolds. So here the, the gopis amidst the separations of Krishna which they constantly have in Vrindavan it's they know Krishna is there but they can't be with him that separation fructifies into union and this is considered in the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition not only the highest the highest expression of devotion but it is the it is the time where Krishna in the Bhagavatam says that oh gopis the service you have done I can never repay you for that so Ramanucharya explains that, that the Lord has everything in the Bhagavad Gita in the seventh chapter Krishna says that those who approach him even if they approach for worldly desires he says in 7.16 that some people come because they want worldly things Chaturvidha bhajan te maam jana sukrutano arjuna arto jignyasura tharthi jnani cha and in the next verse, 7.17 he says, Udhara sarva evaite And all those who come to me, they are very charitable. Udhara means charitable. Now, people are coming to God, asking Him for wealth, asking Him for relief from their problems. And still God is saying, oh you are so charitable. So now, normally, if somebody is asking for something, you don't consider them charitable. Isn't it? So what's going on? So Ramanacharya explains that Krishna controls everything in the world except one thing. And that one thing is the heart of the soul. Our hearts are one thing which Krishna can't control. And this, our heart and the love of our heart is what Krishna wants more than anything else. And if a devotee comes and offers Krishna even a little portion of his heart, his or her heart, then Krishna feels so grateful. Oh, you're so kind. You have offered your devotion to me. And Krishna says, oh, you're so charitable. The idea of charity is that it is voluntary. If it's force, then it's tax. It's not charity. <laughs> so charity is that it's voluntary. And similarly, devotion, when it is voluntarily offered, whatever might be the other motivation associated with it, but if it's voluntarily offered, then Krishna feels, oh, you have done me a great favor. So Krishna calls even those who come to him for their own interest, but they worship him. He calls them charitable. From that perspective, the gopis who give their everything to Krishna, they are the top most charitable people. They give up not only bad things, there is no trace of impurity in the gopis. But they give up even the good. They give up even the, at least they are ready to give up 
the reputation of being respectable honorable women in a conservative society they are ready to give up everything of course krishna protects their reputation and krishna makes sure that by yoga maya's arrangement the gopis who go away and expansions of those gopis are there at home so that people think that they are not actually gone so but the point is the gopis don't know this is going to happen and the gopis are ready to risk everything for krishna and as krishna says what service you have done i can never repay you for that i can never repay you for that so here among all the gopis all the gopis are exalted devotees but among them in this enforced separation that is there the separation is arranged in is intrinsic to the situation of vrindavan but through that separation their devotion manifests more than anything else and when this devotion manifests it is so captivating among all the gopis it is radharani's love that is the supermost now why is it the supermost because she is ready to give up everything for krishna basically love is seen in two broad ways one is what we are ready to give to our beloved and second is what we are ready to give up for our beloved okay i have this i'll give it to you that's a sign of love so for example if somebody uses a very valuable gift that indicates that indicates some kind of at least connection respect affection and somebody has something important to do and they give up that to come to uh, to meet us or come to honor our invitation that we have made so what you are ready to give for a person give to a person and what ready you are, to, you are what you are ready to give up for a person both of these show the love of the gopis for krishna and in both ways both of these show love in general and the gopis demonstrate this love now there is one extraordinary past time where the hierarchy of god and of the worshiped and the worshipper is completely inverted so as i said that this hierarchy is subordinated it is subordinated for example when the gopis think of krishna just as a just a lovable cowherd boy they don't think of him consciously as god they know that he is god but it is a back of their consciousness so in that sense the hierarchy is god is high up and we are here this is subordinated but that hierarchy is inverted and that inversion of hierarchy happens in a past time which is called the man leela what is the man leela that once krishna does something which displeases and angers radharani and now let me say that actually can you be angry with god now it's it's you know god has reason to be angry with us but do we have do we have can we be angry with god of course you know, god is big enough to accommodate everything he can accommodate even our anger but the point here is so draupadi she is also when the whole uh, vastraharan happens it doesn't actually happen it is attempted when she is attempted to be disrobed and after that when she is in the forest and krishna comes to meet her she asks krishna i called you why didn't you come i am your devotee i am your friend i am your relative i needed your help why did you come she is almost angry with krishna krishna doesn't say i am god how dare you question my plan <laughs> krishna simply says actually there was a demon who had attacked dwarka and i was busy fighting that demon i didn't know what happened the of course a miracle happened and the sari became inexhaust inexhaustible so draupadi was protected but nobody saw krishna over there and draupadi's eyes were closed and she also didn't see krishna so krishna so even god is big enough to accommodate our anger also so devote so but still that is that anger towards god is something which is very extraordinary there is often fear of god not anger towards god but radharani gets angry with krishna and when he she when she, he is upset with him you no know, krishna becomes desperate 
somehow or the other i have to please radha rani and then he begs her he beseeches her he promises her he reassures her he does everything possible and when nothing works at that time finally krishna falls at the feet of radha rani and he puts his head on her feet and begs forgiveness now when jaydev goswami wrote this He, he couldn't write it. How can God touch anyone's feet? See, the normal hierarchy is inverted. Many of you know that past time when Krishna acts as if he has got a headache, and then the only medicine for that is that the dust of the feet of his devotees, and the only devotees who are ready to do that are the gopis. But actually, it's not required. When Krishna says that. I wanted to demonstrate to you the love of the gopis for me. That although they knew that if the dust of Krishna's lotus feet, of the dust of their lotus feet touch Krishna's head, they would go to hell. But they felt that the thought that Krishna has a headache that is itself is hell for us. Unless Krishna's headache is relieved, we can't is relieved. We can't live. So at that time they give their dust. They express their readiness for that. but among all the gopis it is only one gopi whose dust actually touches krishna's head and that happens in the man lila now this inversion of hierarchy where normally the devotee touches the feet of the lord but here the lord touches the feet of a devotee this level of inversion of hierarchy demonstrates how in the kingdom of god it is not god who is supreme in the kingdom of god it is love who is supreme it is bhakti it is prema that is supreme and the glory of radharani is not that she is so proud that she demands that krishna you bow down to me it's rather her love is so great that the complete gamut of relationships or complete gamut of emotions within the relationship can be exhibited with her so this is the speciality that krishna becomes so desperate for getting radha association that he is ready to even bow down to her, her feet and then of course so time and time in vrindavan in the normal setting of vrindavan there is separation there is union there is separation there is union there is separation there is union now it's interesting that when the goswamis the goswamis are great devotees of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and this rasleela because it involves a male female interaction although it's a transcendental male and female interaction but still it's a male female interaction so, so, so immediately our red flag starts getting up rising what's going on over here so that same mood is demonstrated in gaur leela where the lord comes in the mood of radha rani as chaitanya mahaprabhu and he is a he is a sanyasi and then his intimate associates lalita vishaka and all of them they also come along with the gopis as the various associates of lord chaitanya and they also exhibit bhakti in a mood of selfless sacrificial love and the interesting thing is that when the goswamis are in the world and they have their royal uh, royal positions in the court of nawab husain shah and they want to renounce everything and come to be with the lord at that time the lord sends a letter says don't do this and then the example that he gives for how they should live can seem scandalous but it is profound the example he gives is that suppose suppose a woman has a relationship with some man other than the husband then she will do all her household duties very diligently but at the same time her heart will be with her husband so similarly he lord chaitanya says that you do your royal responsibilities diligently but let your heart be with krishna So now why is he giving something which seems immoral as an example or of a model for devotion It's not immoral the point over here is this is the way the gopis demonstrated devotion 
and what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is telling the Goswami is is that you follow in the footsteps of the gopis now for all of us while well, uh, so this was the first separation and i'll come back to this in conclusion but briefly let me mention about the second separation that the gopis had that was when krishna left at that time when the gopis saw that krishna is going to leave they just couldn't bear it they tried every means earthly and heavenly to try to stop krishna from going and finally they laid down their bodies in front of the chariot and they begged krishna please stay and krishna promised them i will soon come back and then he left the gopis radharani in the beautiful prayer says krishna my body is like a cage and my soul is like the animal in this cage and when you left at that time you are leaving was like the fire being set to this cage and when the fire was set to this cage of my body it is my soul would immediately have left the body but your pro words i will come back they are like the like the bolt to that cage so this fire of separation from you is burning me but because we know you will come back we can't leave our bodies says we can't live and we can't leave what do we do ai dina dayardra nathe mathura nath kadava lokke se rudayam tada lok kataram daita brahmani kim karomya ham kim karomya ham Radha Rani is saying, "What should I do in such a situation?" So now, the gopis, their whole mood was, "We want to serve Krishna. We want to please Krishna." And they are thinking that Radha Rani, especially, is thinking that if Krishna comes back, and Krishna doesn't see us, if we have left the world, then Krishna will be disappointed. Krishna will be distressed. Krishna will be devastated, and we can't do that to Krishna. so you know, there are different forms of rejection that we may experience in the world sometimes our loved ones may reject us when we want to love god when we want to devote ourselves to god and sometimes our friends may reject us and all the rejection is very difficult to accept but the ultimate rejection in love is by the object of love itself so the devotion is never tested as much as when the devotee experiences rejection from god itself so in both the cases in the case of sita apparently ram rejects her in the case of the gopis krishna rejects them but in in the bhakti bhakti sutras it is said and bhishma pitam also says in the mahabharat that how do you know when love is real and serious he is it is said that when there is every reason for the bond of love to break and it doesn't break that is real love so here that summit of the love is demonstrated by both these divine consorts ultimately if the object of our love rejects us and still we keep loving Now that means you really love. So such is the love the gopis demonstrate, and Krishna goes away. Now it sometimes, actually, it's, it's. You can they can have a situation of hopelessness, or you can have a situation of hope. But in the situation of uncertainty, it's even more painful. So suppose you have a if somebody has got a permanent back pain. then they just it's difficult but they get used to it i know whenever i walk i'll have this back pain whenever i do and you learn to live life with that situation but suppose somebody has uncertain back pain that is one day you wake up and you feel like like 20 years old and the next day you wake up and you feel your body is 200 years old then when this uncertainty 
actually it's more irritating it's more painful because the hope rises oh things will be normal and then the hope is shattered so the emotional involvement with that pain is is more when the pain is uncertain with the if the pain is certain then you become sort of dead into it become numb to it live with it so in the case of sita ram sent her away and at that time there is because there is not much hope that they would be united again so it is very difficult for sita but she accepted that and that's her glory and it's her glory further that she never bad mouthed ram in front of love and kush she always helped them to grow up into wonderful people and but now in the case so in the case of the gopis in contrast and the radharani especially that what happens is that there is it there is hope that krishna may come back and every day every day every day when they wake up today is the day when krishna will come back and they are waiting and waiting and waiting and every morning the candle of their hope lights bright and as the day passes the candle starts getting extinguished 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 the next day with the rising of the sun again the candle of their hope lights and again it gets extinguished so here hope hopelessness hope hopelessness hope hopelessness this alteration of emotion is incredibly intense and this is the incredible intensity of the love of the gopis for krishna now of course jiva goswami describes how krishna after he kills dantavakra he comes back and he unites with the gopis and all of them is a majestic description of krishna and radha's wedding and then after their wedding it is the separation has culminated in union in krishna radha and all of them The, the same chariot which has taken krishna away from vrindavan to mathura that same chariot radha and krishna ride on that and then that same chariot comes to vrindavan so it comes to yamuna and then it comes to yamuna by the mystical power of yoga maya it splits into two and on one chariot radha krishna and the brajvasis they fly high into the sky and go back to the spiritual world on the other chariot is krishna alone and he goes back to continue his dwarka past times so krishna continues his role in the world still in separation from krishna from radha that is one expansion of krishna another expansion of krishna is united with radha in the spiritual world so both those separations which both these divine consorts experience they are extraordinary and they demonstrate the paramountcy of love radhar premer premer sima radhar gaurav one of god vishnu acharya says that the summit of love is demonstrated by radharani in her devotion for krishna and in this summit of love what is the mood of radharani how can i serve krishna how can i please krishna and she is ready to, ready to do anything for pleasing krishna and that means even taking the role of an angry lover whom krishna has to please so she does everything for krishna for a devotee the thought that god is often touching my feet it's unconscionable how can you do that but she is ready to do that even that for krishna that is the magnitude of her love and that same radharani she when she comes as she chaitanya mahaprabhu she has this two missions the inner mission is to relish the love of radharani for krishna and the outer mission is to share that love with the world that, that love is glimpsed in primary preliminary ways now the essence of that love is sacrifice so radharani she is ready to sacrifice everything for krishna and the gopis as chaitanya mahaprabhu tells sanatan rupan sanatan goswami that you work diligently but let your heart be with krishna so that is the way in which we all have to live 
in in many ways the spiritual world is a reflection of, is the spiritual world is the original of which the material world is a reflection so in the spiritual world also at a pure transcendental level the gopis have two lives one is radharani has this one life where they are away from krishna another life where they are with krishna and we also in the material world have these two lives we have our social responsibilities we have our professional obligations we have our family challenge issue challenges and we all have our relationship with krishna so the way we move forward in our devotion is that for us also most of the times our practice of bhakti is devotion in separation mm -hmm. that devotion in separation which is at the topmost level that devotion is in separation is filled with intensified remembrance intensified absorption but in our case there is devotion separation and that is characterized not by intense remembrance it is characterized by intense forgetfulness we not only forget krishna we forget that we were also meant to remember krishna so maya covers us and then covers the covering so that we don't even know we are covered it it said that we are all fallen in kali yuga now if if we don't think we are fallen then we are really fallen <laughs> it's like if a person has drunk a little bit then they understand and say i have drunk now how oh, they they'll tell someone you know can you drive me back i can't drive or can you get a cab for me but if somebody has drunk a lot then maybe the bartender says i think you should not drive ah, i can drive ah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> when somebody is very drunk they don't even understand they are drunk so similarly <laughs> when somebody is very fallen they don't even understand they are fallen and quite often that is our condition so for us we have to we have to practice devotion and separation but for us what happens devotion and separation the devotion goes away and only separation remains so that's why we regularly need need association of devotees we regularly need spiritually inspiring programs and shri prabhupad has created this whole wonderful krishna consciousness movement and prabhupad said that at one time the devotees would ask him now about the past times of radha krishna should we remember those past times and prabhupad said the way to enter into radha krishna leela is by fulfilling the mission of chaitanya mahaprabhu it is by serving the lord in our various services at a practical level you now we have to cook for the lord we have to serve prasadam we have to hear a long class that's also a sacrifice <laughs> so we do all these sacrifices this is the way we express our love for krishna and through all these we are from our level taking baby steps towards krishna and as we keep taking those steps keep taking those steps we will move closer and closer to krishna so we seek radharani's radharani's mercy so that when we are practicing devotion and separation our that separation is unavoidable but the devotion will increase through that separation so when we come to the temples at that time we try to take in krishna as much as possible the krishna naam the krishna katha the krishna leela the krishna roopa the krishna krishna bhakta sangha we take in all these as much as possible and take it deep into our hearts and the, the the divine goddess who enables us to relish krishna to remember krishna to relive krishna's leela in our heart that is shrimati radharani so today is her appearance day and for the sustenance of our spiritual life in the material world radharani is both the supreme model and the supreme benefactor so let us all pray to shrimati radharani that we gain deeper and deeper devotion by her blessings and one day we can be blessed to enter into her shelter in the eternal past times of the lord so let's conclude with the prayer that i offered in the beginning once more krishna prema mai radha krishna prema mai radha 
राधा प्रेम मयो हरि जीवन धने नित्यम राधा कृष्ण गतिर्मा राधा इज फॉर एवर फिल्ड विथ लव फॉर कृष्णा कृष्णा इज फॉर एवर फिल्ड विथ लव फॉर राधा दिस डिवाइन कपल आर द इटर्नल ट्रेजर ऑफ माई लाइफ दे आर द सुप्रीम गोल ऑफ माई लाइफ दे आर माई लाइफ श्रीमती राधा रानी की श्री राधा अष्टमी महा महोत्सव की श्रील प्रभुपाद की गाय गौर प्रेमानंदे